welcome to the Walzer Auto Campus where today we are in the wonderful Land Rover building. Here just beside me is going to be the brand new 2022 Land Rover Range Rover. Now this is the big body, the recent redesign, the first time that this has been redesigned in over 10 years. Since its 50 year production lineup, it had only been redesigned about five times and this is the fifth generation. Their main point for this entire generation is everything simplified. So a lot of the lines have been simplified, a lot of the designs have, have been simplified and I'm very excited to show everything to you. Starting off on the front, the LED headlights are going to be the signature daytime running lights for the Range Rover product. However, the jewels inside have been made a little bit more square and once again a little bit more simple. Up on top here you will have your amber turn signal and this will be the standard headlight housing. You do have an upgraded headlight housing with the Pixel LEDs. Up on front you'll notice that this one does have the shadow package which will black out this grille here and then black out the emblems and the lower piece. But again, when you concentrate on the grill, a very Range Rover style grill, but again, simplified with these ovals rather than the previous design with a lot more hexagons in it. You, I want to concentrate here on the green badge. The green badge will signify that this is going to be the six cylinder model. The black badge is going to be reserved specifically for the SVs that'll have that BMW source twin turbo V8. They actually had to fiddle with that, I just learned, uh, to make sure that it can have a weighting depth of 33 inches. So they had to fiddle with the BMW V8 and make sure that the air intakes were where they needed to be and everything was where it needed to be to make sure that this vehicle maintained the off-roading prowess that it had since it was first launched. Moving to the side of the vehicle, simplicity again continues. For the first time on Range Rover product, you will have 23 inch wheels as an option. They come with 23s as standard. In this case, you'll have a black multi-spoke that goes very well with the monochromatic look. New design here as well. As on the previous big body rovers, you will have typically a line running across the bottom of it and continuing along the back. In this case, they simply have this nice U shape here. Should this be an autobiography, it would have an autobiography symbol right here, and that would be the only place on the autobiography that it would state that. They removed a lot of the rear badging, again, in this case of simplifying it and making it cleaner. I want you to join me on the inside in just a second, but first, I want to take a look at this nice floating black roof. You do have a couple of shark fins up there. There are a couple of controversial points with this car. That has for sure been a talking point, there, but there is a reason for that that we'll talk about once we get to the rear. And then moving along the bottom of the car through this nice Fuji white paint, you'll have some nice black on the bottom. Now we have been told that every Range Rover, the big bodies at least, will have this in black. They wanted to create a little bit higher stance. Obviously this vehicle can sit very low as it is right now, but they wanted the black in the front, the black on the side, and the black on the back to be one nice continuous line to kind of make it feel a little bit more elevated and a little bit more aggressive. So now let's jump inside. All right, inside the new Range Rover. All of this, of course, a massive departure and a massive redesign from the previous body style, which you'll actually see just out front, um, but an absolutely wonderful show of what Range Rover can do with a lot of time and a lot of effort. Uh, as I've mentioned before, they've had 10 years to kind of figure out what they want to do with this new model. And in my opinion, they've done it very, very right. So I want to concentrate on this new floating screen here. You will have ambient lighting running all the way along the bottom of it, along the doors, and all of that is very, very configurable. Uh, so this screen here, again, a little bit controversial. I said there were a couple of controversial points. This is going to be one of them. Right now, I have the haptic feedback off because that's what I prefer, a traditional style touchscreen uh, with sliding and no haptic feedback. If you have the haptic feedback on, it does require a little bit more of a forceful push. And so something that we can dig into. You'll have applications here for navigation, specific accounts for each individual driver. I want to hop in seat manipulation really quick because this is where this product has always stood out as a very luxurious product. So you'll have driver and passenger configurations here for bolsters, knee adjustments, headrest adjustments. You'll have seat heating balances here for the front and the rear. The driver can actually turn on the rear heated seats should they want to. Uh, if we get to the more adjustments, this is where it gets very, very cool. So you'll have folding opportunities where you simply tap and you can fold or unfold each individual seat. 
course I have people in the back, so we won't do that to them and fold them up. Uh, but the way that they do this is very, very cool. Uh, if we have chauffeur mode, that I actually can do. So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna put seat away, which will then move up this passenger seat over here to allow the individual being chauffeured to have a lot more leg room. And once this is all the way up, you'll have about an additional 12 inches of leg room here for those rear occupants that are being chauffeured. So a very nice show of what technology really can do for this car. Uh, you'll have different memory seats here for one, two, and three. So if I set it back to one, it just set memory one as this. Very, very cool stuff. If we go back to our applications, you'll have accounts, like I said before, climate controls. Let's go to cameras. This is very, very fun technology for the new Range Rover product. You have 3D augmented reality. And so if you're doing off-roading or if you're pulling into a Whole Foods parking lot, you can make sure that you don't scratch any of the 23-inch wheels. And you can simply move around the vehicle. It shows which door is open, which I think is rather special. And then moving around the front as well. This space is, of course, deaded out because of the camera crew that I have in the back, uh, but a very, very fun way to move around the vehicle. You have cornering cameras, top-down cameras, of course. Uh, you can actually clean the cameras here with this housing. Very cool stuff. That's for on-road. And then off-road, you'll get these rather nice uh, camera views here. So you'll have your differential locking, the positions of your wheels. You'll have, again, left and right side. That's just a dead zone right now because of that door. And then your front trail camera to see what rocks or possible undulations are coming along the roadway. Moving back to the application screen, Apple CarPlay. This is what I was most excited to see because a lot of the new manufacturers are toying with different ways of putting Apple CarPlay on an otherwise Android screen. So let's tap this really quickly. And you'll get a nice deep dive into my personal life. So hotspot that I go pops up automatically. Obviously, Apple Maps, all very simple and easy to get around with. You'll have music connectivity, phone connectivity, and of course, your home screen where you can very easily scroll through and do everything. This is one of the best applications that I've seen for Apple CarPlay, once again, in an OEM setting. And of course, you have your widgets over here. Uh, Apple CarPlay, again, being very popular in a lot of vehicle manufacturers, but this has to be one of the best. And I love that it shows up in your hot bar over here. So you can flip through navigation, phone connectivity, vehicle information, which we'll go to next, all very, very quickly. Three ride modes here. Um, access will, of course, be the lowest setting, the setting that most people will set it in once they get out looks the best. You'll have normal and then off-road. If I started the vehicle, it would of course raise, but I wanna talk about this setting really quick. So I wanna go back to applications. The only complaint I have is there is a lot of buttons to press when you wanna go between a couple of things. So I understand it doesn't include accessories. Let's go, there we are. So you'll have actually vehicle dimensions here. Right now it's in meters. Let's get into American feet. 16 feet, seven inches long from nose to tail seven foot three inches wide with the mirrors out, five foot 11 tall. Now this number here is what I wanna concentrate on. The vehicle in access height has six inches of ground clearance. Should we put this in off-road mode, you then have 11 inches of ground clearance or an overall ride height increase of five inches. Makes the vehicle very, very tall indeed, but you do get an incredible amount of verticality out of this air suspension and it is comfortable, in fact, in every single mode. Moving back to applications, of course, you have uh, the 4x4i. This will be their intelligent 4x4 modes. Uh, so you can scroll through here and you get information about every single uh, off-road mode that they have. So this is sand, provides all the information that you need and what that mode actually does. Something that a lot of other manufacturers don't do. They say they have off-road mode. Well, what does off-road mode actually do? If you wanna crawl rocks, that's why you use this. All very interesting stuff. You'll have wade sensing here. Of course, do not exceed the vehicle limits and capabilities, but this is where you have that max two feet, six inches or 0.77 meters of water. So as you can see, this will go all the way up and completely cover those massive 23 inch wheels, even almost the tires that are sat on them. You get about halfway up the door, halfway up the front and three quarters of the way up the trunk lid. Absolutely incredible stuff. It is requesting that I start the engine. So I do wanna do that because this the way that this starts up is unlike any other car that I've experienced. It just starts. There's no starting motor, there's no noise. It just simply turns on and all of a sudden we're alive. Very cool animation there and on the front as well on the driver view. So 
That is pretty much everything to do with this new um, touch screen. I do want to move, again, applications here, all very pretty. I want to move in front of me. And so if I can get this to do exactly what I want it to, I'm going to go here first. So driver view, you will have media, um, your miles per hour there, and then navigation, should navigation were inside, of course, or rather difficult to get nav inside, uh, but navigation would be there. All of this can be manipulated and controlled to see exactly what the driver wants to see. So if you want your tripometers over here or your locking differential controls over here, there's navigation for us. Uh, you can have navigation over there, you can have tripometers, anything that you want can be over there, and it all is used by these touch buttons. So what's rather cool is on these, they will actually change your view and your options as you click into them. So if you click the center, the phone, the wild card, and the advance on your tracks will go away, and then you have four little arrows to choose from. Very cool stuff. You'll of course have the voice commands here, which we haven't tried out yet. I don't know that I want to. I can't. I have yet to find an automotive manufacturer that does that well, but I'm excited to try that out. And then you of course have your radio controls over here. On the right hand side, if you do have adaptive cruise control, you will have those little features here. Your heated steering wheel button, which works very, very well, heats up the entire steering wheel, both top and inside. So as you're grasping it, even your fingertips get nice and warm. Again, an option, but highly recommended, especially for a vehicle of this prowess. Uh, but as we look around the cabin, there is leather every single spot imaginable, all the way up on the dash. This nice kind of viewing placard here with some multi-dimensional leather and stitching, um, all very well taken care of. Some nice bright work where there should be bright work. Again, some black interiors can get quite dark, but I think that uh, Land Rover has done a very nice job of incorporating some really high quality aluminum materials throughout to break up that otherwise very, very black interior. Pretty much done with the front. I wanna show you guys what the rear seats look like with me, six foot two, having a driving position that is proper. So in the back of the new Range Rover, you will have four zone climate control should you select it. Uh, but the way that they did these again is very tactile and very simple, right? Uh, so you simply push if you want to adjust for the heated seats in the rear, should they be selected one, two, and three stages. You give it another tap and it'll go back to the temperature where you can then adjust the temperature down or up. And if you pull, that will then be your fan speed. So one, two, three, all the way up to seven. Not quite sure why they picked seven, but they did. But then you have, of course, some very nice touch buttons here to manipulate exactly where you want the air going, either feet or face uh, or auto. Underneath there, you will have some more charging ports. You have two USB-C ports for charging and a 12 volt power outlet there. So plenty of opportunities for both the front and rear occupants to be charging. I did forget to mention that my phone is actually running on the wireless charger right now. I was running quite low, messing around with the vehicle before, of course, we started filming. So it is running on the wireless charger that is up front underneath the dash. It works very, very well. Again, something that more automotive manufacturers have been trying to get into real life production. Uh, but of course, a lot of them have nannies, but this has been working very, very well. I'm wondering how it would work on the road, but it works right now, and of course, with the way that these ride, you might not feel any bumps anyway. Now, moving towards the back seats, of course, nice soft Range Rover leather. That is very typical and some wonderfully nice deep pile floor mats. These have gotta be the biggest that I've seen um, in any vehicle other than, of course, a Rolls Royce or Bentley. So very, very high quality floor mats there. Moving this down, of course, you'll have a couple of opportunities for an armrest, a bit of storage, should you pop that up. And then some of the most unique rear cup holders that I've ever seen. Flip. So a couple of cup holders here. And this mechanism, again, with everything that they do, they want it to be simple. And it looks wonderfully simple. But the way that it operates is quite the opposite. So if you fold this, you'll actually get to see the mechanism a little bit where this folds in, down, inverts on itself, and then clicks shut. And that's kind of the story and what I've found. Um, I had quite a lot of time uh, with this vehicle before we started filming. And while they're saying everything is simplified and everything is you know, magnificently uh, modern, the little details are where they really kind of pull out all the stops and do proper Range Rover stuff. Mechanics like this, uh, the push-pull of your climate controls, both fore and aft, 
they they really did simplify things uh, but it's the little details when you get a chance to actually own this car uh, that really come out which is very very nice it's not simple and boring it's very simple and elegant so we'll pop that back up and then I'm gonna scoot over there because I want to show you guys the window switches because there are quite a lot of them so if I come on over here I actually get an opportunity to act like I'm being chauffeured which will never happen in my entire life unless uh, of course the nice folks here at uh, Land Rover Wichita would like to do it but my heated seats are actually on so that's rather annoying I'm gonna turn that off with this nice little dial just like that wonderful and now I want to concentrate on a couple of things so again a nice leather wrap door card all the way throughout you do have the Meridian 3d surround sound system which is very nice and a lot of again like I mentioned very nice aluminum here uh, for an otherwise all black interior you'll have locking and unlocking here a magnificent door handle actuator here very heavy very substantial makes you feel like you're opening a bank vault not just a car door but again a very Range Rover feeling up here on top you will of course have your seat controls for both forward and back recline the very cool stuff is on top and so you'll have an opportunity to not only adjust this mirror but both mirror or both windows I should say and then if I want to just adjust that one I can just adjust that one this is the same for both passengers in the back you'll have reading lights and laptop lights something I found that was very very cool is there are two different kinds of lights in the back your laptop light will be a cool blue in two stages high and low and your reading light when you're reading a book actually is another LED light but more of a warm white uh, so something that won't turn your pages blue it actually just amplifies that nice yellow page and then of course you have your screen here so you can close that if you like both rear occupants of course can do that and you can also up on top mute the radio so if you want to talk to your driver if you want to actually have a conversation with someone else and the music is just too loud uh, you can actually mute it both occupants can do that in the back so something very very special and then of course something that is very Range Rover I'll put that back up the wonderful sun shades and I really like how they've done this a lot of other manufacturers We'll have a little piece of plastic here that runs in the middle and actually obstructs your view. They've built the mechanism into a pillar that already exists in that three quarter window pillar. Uh, so a very nice application for some rear sun shades. Again, simple, but something that has been sought out over the last decade, which I really, really love. Now, let's move to the back where again, simple is key, uh, but there's a lot of really cool features that, are, that I think you're gonna like. Finally, on the rear of the new Range Rover, perhaps the most interesting piece that they have changed. We want to start at the top and talk about the double shark fins. They are there for connectivity, map, uh, vehicle Wi-Fi, and the one on the left does have a camera in it. So you will have a digital rear view camera, something that is rather nice, again, for seeing at night or even seeing during a particularly bright day. Moving down again through the black floating roof, you'll have a hidden rear windscreen wiper, something Range Rover. Um, pretty much pioneered with this clean black glass and a rear wiper that's sitting up there and hidden unless being used. And then finally to the back, this nice oval shape that the new 2022 and 2023 and forward Range Rovers will have will be this nice black shape here, lights on either side, and then this nice piece of black aluminum down here. And I did say lights, of course, uh, we are not the first to discover this but these are going to be your brake lights, your turn signals, uh, your daytime running lights, what have you. So these are actually the brightest LED lights on the market. They have to punch through that black. And so when they flash, they are very, very bright in person. The camera might have a difficult time picking it up, but there's some very nice, again, detailing within these lights, some nice black dots here to kind of give it a bit of texture rather than just having a nice solid piece of LED. Moving along, of course, the nice black here with the dark Range Rover tint again something that the shadow pack will get you typically it will be a nice bright aluminum and then overall the rear end being very very aggressive uh, again simplification you'll have the Land Rover and Range Rover badge that is it you will have no trim badge uh, no autobiography badge like I mentioned we were in the front of the video and moving all the way down to the bottom is this bumper piece now this is the first time I've ever said bumper for something that doesn't really look like a bumper uh, most unique piece of styling here, I think, for the 22. Something that I didn't catch in a lot of other videos was how much this sticks out and how nice uh, it complements this otherwise very curved buttress for 
the 2022 Range Rover. You do have tow package as an option. Your reverse lights are actually hidden down here again for that nice, clean, modern look. Now, let's get the tailgate open. So, of course, that'll open the top gate. Nice bit of clearance here. Again, I am six foot two, so a lot of nice clearance here. And even leaning into the vehicle, I was worried that this would be a concern, this little drop down piece of plastic here. But overall, when you're leaning in, there's plenty of room. You do have a cargo tray here, and this nice little privacy cover that is powered. So a nice little button on the side of the cargo area will get this to close. And then once again, of course, open. I have been told that this is removable as well. So if you want a lot more verticality in the cargo area, you can remove this shelf and make sure that uh, you can load whatever you'd like to load. Moving all the way to the back, full-size spare tire, which is rather nice to see in a vehicle of this size and of this off-roading prowess. Closing that back up, you'll have a 12-volt power outlet back there as well. And then, of course, if we were to put this tray down, of course powered, you'll have a nice little storage area here. So this is a nice little cargo organizer where you can slide these. You have elastic um, here to hold, for example, a bottle of wine. When you get to the party, you simply take that out set it aside, give it to someone, and then you have, of course, a divider. So you can put anything here that you'd like as it's moving around, crock pots, dishes, and then back there you can have whatever you like, of course, as well, travel bags. And then this simply closes down like that for a nice flat rear parcel tray. Now let's say that we're doing a bit of event seating. You'll have a couple of cup holders on either side, one right here and one on the other side as well. A couple of nice LED lights on top of you as well as four in the cargo area. And then let's say you're going to be sitting somewhere for a particularly long time, uh, a polo game, a uh, baseball game, what have you. This clicks into place, sit back, and you can kind of relax on the Range Rover. So event seating is an option. I believe it's about a $2,500 option where you get some leather seats here and some nice leather backrests. Wonderful place to be uh, should you have the opportunity to use it. So we'll simply unlock these, push them back down. And then we'll get into, if you need more cargo space, so a nice flat area as well. Should you want to, you can then fold by power the rear seats. So those will go down, and then you have all that opportunity. The left one, of course, isn't going down because I didn't uh, move that driver's seat all the way forward. But it is nice that it stops. It doesn't ruin those leather on the headrest. So you'd simply go up to the front, adjust the front seat, and get it all the way down flat. And of course, once you're done with the event, you can pull them back up. This is also something that can be done, of course, from the front like we saw up there. But if you're already back here, no sense in going up to the front. Why would you do that when you have a couple of switches right here? And then the final couple of switches will be for your adaptive air suspension. So loading height, if you want something a little bit higher up, you can raise that height there. And then, of course, a tool kit and a lot of accessories that can be put in here. These clips, you can have accessories through uh, the Land Rover parts department uh, for, of course, everything that you might need, dog carriers, uh, gun racks, whatever you have. And then simply close, just there. Up goes the bottom, down goes the top of a very wonderful and beautiful simultaneous motion. And there, once again, is the wonderful rear end of the 2022 Range Rover. I want to thank you very much for joining me for this introductory video for the 2022 Range Rover. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more content about this car as well as the recently launched 2023 Range Rover Sport. That video will be coming as soon as we have our hands on one. But for now, I hope you enjoyed. I really do hope that you get to experience this vehicle in person, whether it's on the roads, on our off-road obstacle course, or taking one home for yourself. These are, of course, very sought after, but there are a lot of wonderful ways that you can configure it from the 32 different paint options to the six different wheel options, the six different interior options, the vegan interior options. There's a lot of really fun ways to configure it. So make sure you visit uh, the Land Rover website online and configure one, and then speak to anybody here for any other questions that you might have about this product or any other Land Rover product online.